This is the first video of a two-part series where we're going to shoot a VOR approach into Canyonlands in Utah using the G1000 platform. We've been cleared for the VOR Alpha approach starting from Arch, so we'll pull up the approach. We're already navigating to Arch as part of our cleared route, so when we activate the approach, we simply stay on course towards that fix. Activating the approach puts the primary nav aid, the Moab VOR DME, into Nav1 active on 109.8. We're required to monitor the raw data from the VOR on this approach, but we don't have to lose our navigation guidance from the GPS to do so. On the G1000, we can go into PFD options and push bearing 1. This brings up a thin arrow pointing the direction to the station, which is tuned on nav 1. We'll reference this throughout the approach in subsequent mist. We also have a distance and bearing shown to the left of the HSI. Why might we decide to do the VOR approach when there's a perfectly good RNAV approach into Runway 3? After all, we have a well-equipped RNAV system at our disposal. While coming from the east like this, we might not want to go out past the airport and join the approach course from the west, for time or fuel management reasons, or maybe due to weather on the west side of the field. When we cross Arch, we can descend to the minimum altitude for the feeder route from Arch to Moab, which is 7,900. We'll be using the autopilot throughout this approach which has us following the approach course using GPS mode. We're going to level off at 7900 and cross over the Moab VOR, which is located on the field at Canyonlands Airport. We'll turn outbound on the 298 radial from Moab. This is a feeder route to the initial approach fix, Thole. On the plate, the feeder route is shown with this thin arrow pointing away from the station. It looks like it runs parallel to the approach course, but it's actually located right on top of it. It's just depicted to the side for convenience. So we're flying outbound along the approach course that we'll use when we're final. This is a great chance to have a look at the wind drift we're experiencing on the approach course. The radial we're following has us on a course of 298 degrees, which is what the GPS says we're flying. But due to the wind, about 25 knots from right to left, we need to fly a heading of about 309 to hold that. This is a correction of about 10 degrees into the wind. We can anticipate the same correction when we fly inbound, assuming winds hold steady at lower altitudes. Also, this is the same wind correction we'll need when we hold, which will be highlighted in the second video in the series. So let's talk through what's going to happen next. We're going to fly to Thol, which is 60 ME from Moab, and is a fix on our GPS loaded approach. Then we can descend to 7600 feet and begin the procedure turn. The GPS will fly this by making a left turn as shown on the dotted line pause for one minute, and then make a right turn all the way around to intercept the inbound course, which is 118 degrees. This is the same 298 radial we're currently flying, so we can identify it as when the tail of the arrow is on 298, just like it is here. So when we get to Thole and the GPS has us turn left, we start our descent to 7600. Notice the tail of the arrow begins to swing left away from the 298 radial. We're pulling the tail towards our heading. This is where we get the memory aid push the head, pull the tail. As depicted on the MFD moving map, the GPS has us turn inbound. We'll be flying the inbound course of 118 degrees. Remember that 10 degree wind correction we had? This will translate to about a 105 or 108 heading, so we'll expect the GPS to roll out there. Notice in the turn that the tail of the arrow is moving back towards the 298 as we re-intercept that radial. Also notice the rate of turn depicted on the PFD. Normally, we make standard rate turns, which would have the arc go out to here, but the autopilot is turning more shallow than that. It's accounting for wind. This is an important point to understand about the G1000, and we'll explore it in the second video a little bit more. Now that we're established inbound, we can descend to 7100 feet. After passing full, the final approach fix, we can go down to our MDA. Notice our ground speed. It's higher than the 90 knots of Cat A aircraft so we should really use the cap B minimums of 5200. At 5200, we'll begin looking for the runway and plan to either circle the land or go mist, which we'll execute at the mist approach point, the VOR station. We're gonna do the full mist on this approach, which we'll highlight in the second video. And for now, check out IFR training and so much more at Flight Insight at the link here and in the description.